So just before we go to those breakouts, though, let's hear a little bit more about participatory budgeting. And we're joined by Tia Crum and Sherry Davis to talk about it. Tia Crum is the Associate Director of Neighborhood Initiative at Great Cities Institute, where she has led participatory budgeting processes in Chicago since 2012. She also serves as a co-chair of the Global Participatory Budgeting Practitioners Board, which aims to improve practice and impacts. Sherry Davis is the Executive Director at the Participatory Budgeting Project, is a 2019 Obama Foundation Fellow, and helped to launch the first US instance of youth participatory budgeting in Boston, Massachusetts in 2014. Let me pass it over to the two of you to help you ex help us understand more about what participatory budgeting is. Hey, everybody. And I'm super excited to be able to present one of my really good friends, Taya. Um, as, as was just mentioned, I run the participatory budgeting project in, in the United States, and I get a chance to do things like this, talk about how people together can decide how public dollars are spent and why that's important. And I'm not gonna get into any of the mechanics because Taya is gonna do that, but I did wanted to share with you quickly when it comes to, to young people, part of the reason why I wanted to be in this conversation was as we think about the first instances of PB in the United States, they've really been so connected to the power of young people. And so often we see folks like not allowed to make decisions about so many things. Budgets are a really big thing that people should be able to make decisions about because what happens after the budget decision is the things that affect you. And so young people are often excluded from that because they're not old enough. And so a lot of my work has been around reframing this idea that young people are future leaders, but instead that they're leaders right now. And so I use tools like participatory budgeting. And yes, we did some really awesome work in Boston, and we've done some really exciting work across the country. And so does Taya and can give you some examples of what PB looks like for young people in schools. Thanks so much, Sherry. Um, I'm so excited to be here with Sherry. She's an amazing leader and has done just phenomenal work across the country. Um, just to share a little bit about um, what PB is, we talk about it in the definition that we use across North America is that it's a democratic process in which community members directly decide how to spend part of a budget. And it's an annual cycle um, where it, it follows a pretty standard process where youth, it's very youth driven, youth co collect ideas. And so Jose kind of talked about this, his group is the student voice committee, which is like a student council. So there's about 15 of them and they're collecting ideas from the whole student body, which is about 3000 people. They're gonna then take all of those ideas, they go through them, they think about what's feasible, they think about what, what's gonna be in the best interest, what's risen to the top in terms of priorities, what they've heard the most, that's the proposal development phase. So they're currently in that phase where they're really kind of doing research, they're thinking about, you know, what they've heard the most from, they're going out and talking to other people, they're doing online research, um, they're thinking about which issues are going to have the biggest impact in the school, and then they're going to put that all together on a ballot, and they're getting ready to have their vote, and they're going to have their vote when they come back in, from spring break in April, and that vote will again include the entire student body, and so everyone's voices are heard both kind of in the beginning of the process, throughout the process, it's interwoven throughout, and then at the end, they're directly deciding how to spend this money. Um, as Sherry says, and, and what we've seen in terms of the research um, on it is, is both that youth are talking about how they've seen gains in terms of collaboration, communication. Um, we've heard them talk about how they're using similar skills in around creating graphs and charts and surveys, but that the teachers talk about how they're a little bit more engaged, how they, they've got a little bit more skin in the game, a little bit more stake around it because you know, this is a project that they're gonna actually see come to fruition that's gonna have a huge impact on them and their student body. Um, and and they've, they've got some real stake in that. Um, we've heard students talk about this as their legacy in the school and how that really feels impactful to them. Um, and to give you a sense of some of the other ways in which we really think about and talk about PB is that, you know, there's always a lot of concern in the beginning when you get started about well, what kind of projects are they really going to come up with and how is this money going to be spent. 
And what we've really found is that PB creates these spaces for people to hear each other a little bit differently, for them to not only unearth needs um, in the school, but for them, for for teachers, administrators, and students to come together to co-create and problem solve and to, to hear each other in a, in, a, in a different way. And I'll give you an example of that. In one of our schools that's in a predominantly, it's a predominantly Latinx school that's located in an area that's right next to an industrial corridor that's been the site of a lot of environmental pollution. Um, and in Chicago, and I'm sure in, in many other places, environmental justice is really intertwined with racial justice. Um, many of the locations where um, industry that is a little that is more polluting has been located in low-income communities of color. And this particular um, location has seen many violations in air pollution and soil pollution that have led to actually testing where they've found soil contamination with lead and arsenic. And so um, the students had a lot of concerns about this and they had a lot of concerns about their drinking water. And so they weren't actually using any of the water fountains in the school. Um, and the only other things that were available to them were vending machines that had soda. And sometimes they had you know, water bottles in them, but it was both very costly as well as not very healthy. And many of the students were really interested in having water bottle um, stations that they could refill. So they could just bring you know, a container from home, fill it up and have healthy water. Um, well, through the PB process, this was not only a project and, and an idea that came up and that was cited through a survey by many students, but also by teachers. The students not only then went through the process with the science department to test the water and they did find lead in it. Um, this became one of the projects that of course won and they were able to um, install new drinking fountains that were able to have clean water in the school. But when this was also then reported to the local school council, which helps to oversee all of the spending in the school, they were like, well, what other projects were on that ballot? And one of the other projects that was on the ballot were shower curtains. And they were like, well, wait a minute, shower curtains. What do you mean they're shower curtains? And then the story came out, well, students are chronically late after gym because they were not feeling comfortable showering in front of each other. But mm -hmm. those questions hadn't been asked until they were given the space to have these dialogues and deliberations together. So I'll, I'll end with that um, and encourage folks to come learn a little bit more about how, B, how PB creates these spaces. Fantastic. Yeah, I love that it's an, an opportunity to create new conversations and new initiatives just by saying it and really, you know, basically it's forcing those empowers to take a step back and actually listen 